So today, we're going to talk about Outer Limits. Are you ready? Welcome, friends, back to Two Gun Terry and Friends here on YouTube. We are out at the beautiful OK Corral in Okeechobee, Florida. It is January 2nd. Happy New Year to all my fans, and hope you're having a great start to your new year. Uh, Two Gun Terry is. Uh, at the moment, I shot a match this morning. I'm in first place currently. Uh, they shoot one more day tomorrow. We'll see if we can hold on. Not my best time. I think it's at 81 or something like that, 81.75, something like that. Not my best by any means, uh, but it might be enough to hold on for the match uh, this time around. We'll see. So today, we're going to talk about Outer Limits. And you may know that in Outer Limits, you have three boxes, but you only use two of the boxes. If you're right-handed, you start from the left box and you move to the center box. If you're left-handed, you start from the far right box and move to the center box to finish. So you don't use all three of the... Uh, starting boxes you just use two of the three depending on whether like I said if you're right-handed or left-handed um, the object here is from the first box where you start from you shoot two targets and then run to the second box as quickly as you can and shoot the remaining two targets and then the stop plate so it's the only stage in steel challenge where you actually do move while you're shooting um, also, the one other big difference with Outer Limits is that you only shoot four strings versus the normal five for the other seven stages. Um, you only shoot four because it takes longer to, to run and move, and the times are longer. So to keep it closer to the other stages, instead of being 20 seconds or whatever, they want you to be closer to 12, 13 seconds, something like that, or even faster if you can do it. Uh, and some guys can do sub tens, by the way, on uh, on this. I've seen uh, my buddy Chris Barrett do it, and the Colby Pavlock, and uh, Grant Kunkel, and those guys. Uh, Steve Foster. I don't want to forget my buddy Steve. And there's a bunch of them uh, of that caliber shooter that can do it in sub ten seconds. I've seen them do it in eight something seconds. So that's amazing. Uh, once I start showing you how this works, so let's step back, and I'll show you the stage in just a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and step back into the box and show you the movement that's involved. Let's stand by. Oh, by the way, I am shooting. So, by the way, today I am shooting my um, Franken rifle. Uh, again, it's a PC AMA chassis with a kid res upper receiver, a kid bolt, uh, both quartz and barrel, tandem cross comp, both quartz and trigger, my favorite trigger in the world, both quartz and trigger. Uh, just a regular old A2 grip, not a big deal. And then a smoke composite um, buttstock. And our old trusty Seymour. This one has a 12 MOA dot on it. Seymour uh, uh, Railway uh, site, they call it. Seymour Railway. And a 12 MOA dot. They do have uh, interchangeable uh, modules. So I can make this an 8 MOA, a 6 MOA, etc. Uh, from 2 up to 16, I believe, MOA. So, But I prefer a 12 MOA mainly because out in the sun, in South Florida, the real sunny if the sun's shining into your lens it makes your it shrinks your dot down so by having a bigger dot a you see it faster you pick it up faster um and then b when that bright sun comes into the lens and shrinks the dot if you shrink the 12 mm away to the 6 mm away you can still shoot the dot and see it no problem um the negative to shooting a big dot like that 12 mm away it's not going to be the most accurate shot placement So this rifle fires 22 long rifle bullets, cartridges, and um, I'm using uh, Kirk Grimes' base pads uh, just to make it easier to pull them out and stick them, slap them up inside. Um, I went with all the odd colors on purpose. I was trying to make a, a parrot, but I'm not sure I did a good job, so we might be redoing this rifle, but right now it goes along with my Franken rifle theme. So. <laughs> so black, orange, red, green, and black and silver. That's the color of Franken rifle. Uh, it is a 1022 clone, is what they call it, and um, the Ruger 1022, probably the most famous uh, 22 long rifle rifle they make. Um, uh, extremely popular, millions and millions and millions of them sold. But this is a custom version of that. 
far doesn't even look anything like this gun. Uh, but the action is the same in a, regular, in a Ruger 1022 as it is in this particular uh, uh, Kid and Volkortsen combination. Okay, so this is what Outer Limits looks like. You have plate number one starting on the far uh, left. Plate number one is the 12 inch round plate at 20 yards. Then all the way in the back there, 35 yards, one of the longer shots, in fact, it is the longest shot uh, in Steel Challenge is 35 yards. There are three 35 yard plates throughout the different stages. Two of them are here on Outer Limits. The other one is on speed option. Uh, but that 18 by 24 inch plate is at 35 yards. Then you have a, a mirror image. If you go past the stop plate and you see the other side of the stage, an 18 by 24 at 35 yards and a 12 inch round at 20 yards. The stop plate is dead center in the stage at 18 yards. There are the three boxes, the three shooters boxes that you see here in front of me. Uh, the one on the far left is where right-handed shooters begin. You shoot the first two plates uh, from that box and then you run to the middle box and shoot the remaining three with of course the stop plate being last. If you're left-handed, you'll start from the far right box, shoot the first two targets on the right-hand side of the stage, run to the middle and shoot the remaining three targets uh, uh, again with the uh, stop plate being last. So, and you can see the three flags. If you have a mobility issue where you can't run uh, disable a disability or just not comfortable doing it whatever it is you can start and stay in the center box and shoot the whole entire stage from the center the the only thing is there's a uh, th it depends on the range and the range master you have to have some flexibility on what penalty they issue but it's usually between three and four four second penalty if you decide not to run between the boxes and just start from the center box Okay, but me being, I'm a right-handed shooter, I'm going to go ahead and start in the left-handed box and, um, and then run to the center box from there. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, camera, set it out on that barrel you saw, which, by the way, is usually not in the middle of the stage. Uh, I'm going to uh, just do this so you can see my motion. I'm going to move myself a little bit closer here. Okay, so here we are in Outer Limits, and let's, let me just show you the motion moving between the two boxes and how the stage looks as far as footwork is concerned because footwork is the key to outer limits. The faster you can move from one box to the other, the faster your times are going to be. You can save the most time against your competitors by moving between these boxes quickly. I'll show you how it works. Forgive the wind today. I don't know what it's doing to my camera, but it is a little windy today. Um, might be interfering with the audio, but let's see if we through this. So the way that I shoot it and some of the tips and tricks that I use are as follows. First I like to start with my foot up on the box. Okay now you, if you take a shot with your foot outside the box that's a procedural penalty. Three seconds for every shot you take while your foot is outside that box. So you don't want to do that to you don't want to shoot from outside the box. You got to make sure you're making your yeah, you're inside the box. But you are allowed to be up on top of the rail. That's not a problem. If I take off and I fire my shot and I start to move, that's all perfectly legal. So I like to start with my foot up on the back rail for a couple of reasons. One, I don't want the trip hazard, the potential trip hazard for tripping as I go to leave the box. The worst thing that can happen to you here is you trip and go down with the gun and God forbid it goes off. I mean, that's a whole other thing. You get disqualified and sent home, but you want to avoid the trip hazard. So for me, I start with my foot up on, probably on the back corner. So I take my first shot. So I'm standing here, I'm on the flag, and I'm in the, the ready position. Stand by, are you ready? Stand by, beep. I come up, shoot the first 12 inch round at 20 yards. Bang, that's shot number one. Immediately over to shot number two, which is the 18 by 24 rectangle. Bam! As I f, as soon as I come up and take the first shot, I begin my telling my brain to start moving before I even take the second shot. That's a big deal. It takes a lot of practice, and it doesn't come easy. You got to work at this one, and I'll tell you we'll get to why in just a second. 
but bang, my brain told me to start moving. I start to move, bang, take the second shot, but I'm already starting to move because it takes my brain a moment to react. Says, I say, shot, good. I hit the plate, good. Now start to move. And by the time my body goes into the motion, the electronics, the electrical signals get sent through my body. I've already lost a half a second while it's just all the just processing the command that I'm sending to my body to move. So I take it before I even take the second shot. Now that has huge drawbacks because if you miss that second plate, you end up doing the outer limits dance or the steel challenge dance. I'll show you what it looks like. Bang, bang, oh crap, bang. That's what we call the outer limits dance. When you come out, you realize you missed the shot and shoot. Now you gotta stop yourself from going forward and put yourself back into the shooter's box and redo your second shot. What an incredible waste of time. Don't do that. You must practice the second shot over and over and over again until you know that you're gonna hit that second target 100% of the time. You gotta practice until you hit it 100% of the time. And maybe this leaving on early is not for you. Maybe you can't do it, but I don't think that's true. I think everybody can do it. You must practice it. You must master it in order to get really fast times here on our limits. We got a guy shooting in the next bay over, so forgive the noise, but he's got to practice too. So I come up, shoot the first target, start to move, shoot the second target, come over. Now, as I'm coming into the second box, my foot's planting. My gun has stayed up the whole time. And now I'm taking my shot as this foot comes off the ground, because if it's on the ground, three second penalty, you can't shoot while you're on the ground. So you gotta come up off the ground. So as soon as my foot leaves the ground, now this is a legal shot. You can shoot on one foot. And as soon as I come up, I'm looked at it, I'm already followed my sight all the way across. For me, the third shot in this string is the second far plate, the 18 by 24. Many other shooters, most other shooters, shoot the 20, uh, the 12 inch round plate at 20 yards first, and then the stop plate. Moving from outside, inside, they feel it's faster into the stop plate. And by the way, they're probably right, but I've trained it one way for so long, that's the way I keep shooting it. At some point, I may just try to, to switch that around and get a little faster. But for now, I shoot the two back plates. The reason I'm shooting at the two black plates, by the way, is you're already look focused in at 35 yards. You're already looking that far. And once you move over here, the gun's still out looking that far. So bang, take that uh, 35 yard plate, then come into the 20 and over to the stop plate. Two different choices, two options. Really, uh, those are the only two ways to shoot it. So some people mess with the first two plates. That's, uh, that's not the way to do it. Um, you might be intimidated by a 35 yard target, but it's 18 by 24. I mean, it's a big sucker. You, you, you won't miss it, trust me. Aim low, pull it'll sail up into it. Okay, so I'm sitting here. I've just come into the box. My foot lands. This one's coming up. If I can take the shot, I take it. But as I'm bringing my foot to the ground, I'm utilizing that time. I don't want to waste this much time. If I can get the shot off, boom, fire, fire, fire. 18 by 24, the 20 inch, uh, the 12 inch plate round at 20 yards into the stop plate at 20 yards. That's the way to gun carry shoots the stage. Let me get my gun and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here we go. Same thing we've been doing. I'm gonna shoot the 12 inch round first, then the 18 by 24. Run to the middle box, shoot the 18 and a half, uh, 18 by 24 inch plate in the back, and then the 12 inch round and into the stop plate, the 12 inch round stop plate. Uh, again, some people prefer to shoot the 12 inch round first once they get to the center box. They believe that when you're moving over, your gun is naturally going in that direction towards the plate. But for me, I think because I'm already out at 35 yards, looking at the 35 yard 18 by 24 rectangle that when I move just keep the gun stay right back there at the 18 by 24 hit that plate come out to the uh, 12 by 12 inch round and then into the stop plate it might be a little more motion but you have to go past the 18 by 24 anyway to get to the 12 inch so I don't know if it really makes that big of a difference but 
You try it, and whatever works for you, that's the way you do it. Let's see if we can do it perfectly. So you saw me pause a little bit there for the third shot. The first shot on the big plate in the back from the center box. Uh, I paused because my gun was bouncing. My sight was bouncing. My mistake. It was bouncing, and it took me a minute, a minute to settle the dot down so I could get that shot off. FYI, it's that's okay. It's very important to make sure your dot's on the target before you pull the trigger. Don't just start firing bullets all around. Take that extra tenth of a second, two tenths, whatever that took. Make sure you hit the plate and then continue on with your run. As far as makeup shots go on outer limits, you don't want to make up shot on number two. If you can't hit the second plate every time, 100% of the time, then you have to wait for the audible feedback. You have to wait to know that you hit the target by when the bullet hits and makes a sound. It's slower that way, obviously, because you're waiting for the sound to come back instead of leaving, but it's safer. So as you're getting started, fire on the first plate, don't move, stay where you are. Fire on the second plate, wait till you hear bing. Once you hear the bing, because you hit the plate, then you can start moving. Everything else is the same. Keep the gun up, keep your eye on the dot. Come in with a soft landing, as soft as you can make it. And, uh, and then choose whichever order you want to shoot the last two plates. That's early on. When you get better, you'll do what I say, but I, the way I do it, because it shaves a half a second off your time. Let me show you again. Let's see, do I have any rounds left here? Got five shots left. Let's see. One in the chamber, okay. So again, I come up on the first plate, fire, start to leave, hit the second plate. The second, the second shot should actually be taken before I ever leave the box. My body might be coming up with, the energy might be surging up through the through my muscles to start moving, um, but I'm not, I'm, I'm focused on that target and I'm probably taking that shot while I'm still in the box. And then I, then I leave. Um, but I'm not waiting for audible feedback. I'm focused on that plate so I don't miss it. I hit it every time. Do you hit it every time? Not every time. But I hit it 99% of the times, and I very, very rarely have to do that dance. All right, let's try it again. There you have it, just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to show it to you from behind. Watch my foot move motion and watch the, the hits on the plates. We'll do it first with the pistol because I have it ready to go. Just like that. Do it one more time for you. My foot's up on top of the rail like I talked about. My left leg is pretty close to it, maybe a, a you know nine inches a foot away, tops. And the reason for that is so I can push off. You don't want to cross your feet when you go and run. You don't want to do this. It's a trip hazard. You could hit your leg and trip, whatever. You want to push off. Cross your legs and land in the box. Three steps is all it takes. Don't cross your legs. You also want to start in the very back of the box. And as you're moving, you want to run forward. You want to land here. Running forward, running forward is easier than running directly across in a straight line sideways. Running sideways is slow. Running forward is a natural is natural to you and you run faster. Another good tip. Okay, here we go. Just like that. I guarantee you that was four seconds or less. All right, so now let's do it again with the rifle. Same technique, same everything. Just watch how I'm keeping the rifle up the entire time. My stance is a little low, 
You want the knees bent slightly so they act as shock absorbers, especially when you land in this box. You want to absorb some of that shock. You don't want to stop hard because the rifle, will, the sight will bounce around on you. It's about coming into the center box nice and softly. I'll show you. And I don't always take the I don't always take the first shot from the second box with my one foot in the air. More often than not, my foot's down and I'm stabilizing, trying to hit that target in the back. If I can go do it with one foot in the air and one foot in the box, that means that I was locked on that target the whole time and I could see it perfectly and I'll take the shot. But if I'm not locked on and the sight's still bouncing a little bit, I'll bring my other foot into the box and settle down and make sure that the dot is on the target. One last time for you. Just like that, easy as peasy. In a nutshell, that's Outer Limits. Those are the little tips and tricks that I can share with you. Um, ultra focus on that number two plate. The whole stage comes down to hitting number two on the first attempt and then moving as fast as you can from the, fir the first shooter's box to the center shooter box. And that's the whole secret. Like I said, some people like to shoot it one, they like to shoot the round 12 inch plate first then the 18 by 24, then the far right 12 inch round, then the 18 by 24 into the stop plate, the 12 inch stop plate. It's a matter of how comfortable you are. Some people have tried to shoot the big plate first in the back and then the smaller plate. So bang, 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 just didn't, that doesn't make any sense. Don't even try that. One, two, and then you have your choice of which two you want to shoot for, which one you want to shoot first out of these two. Two Gun Terry from Outer Limits. We'll see you next time. Take care now. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye now. That's all I have for now. Thank you for stopping by. And remember to like, subscribe, and do what? Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.